Facing Cancer Together is a very unique organization. We offer support, emotional psychosocial support, for people with all types of cancer in all stages of cancer. Very rare, not that many types of support are available here in Massachusetts. And our vision is really to continue to provide services where needed for people that are, have psychosocial needs for us. Claire, in a social worker, as a social worker, I'm guessing there's support groups and educational groups. Name a few of the programs that you guys have available. These support groups that are usually comprised of mixed cancers. And then we have what's called networking groups that meet monthly. And those groups are targeted cancers. So we might have a breast cancer group or a multiple myeloma group that's only people carrying that particular cancer. And then another form of support group we have is we have a writing group, which is called Writing for Healing. And we have um, a bereavement group um, as well that meets um, each week. Um, and then we have educational programs that go along. I mean, I think you would call yoga and way an educational program versus a support, a, a wellness type program. And periodically we have people come in and do educational components, like we've had people come in and do nutrition and things like that that are related to integrating their cancer care. So it's a very holistic way of approaching. To some respect, I, I think it also offers a lot of emotional support, uh, which is very important to our participants. We also have other programs, and what's sort of nice about um, the support that we offer, we do have patient cancer support programs, we have caregiver support programs. Mm. Claire mentioned a few of our, our wellness. We also have a Chinese brush painting uh, support group. I saw group. that. Mm -hmm. So we're, um, we're always out there uh, offering what we feel people need, and, and that's the most important. Jackie, I want to start out with you. Um, sort of take us back to that day um, that you were diagnosed with breast cancer. Where were you? What were you feeling? Well, actually, before I was officially diagnosed, I knew that I had breast cancer. I was familiar with the signs. My mother had been diagnosed 40 years earlier. And being a woman and being very conscientious about my health, I was familiar with possible signs of breast cancer. What were your symptoms? Physically, I was very tired. I was a teacher. And beyond the fatigue that can come from teaching, I was bone tired. Mm -hmm. There was a very definite change in the appearance of my left breast. There was a puckering, which I knew to be one of the possible warning signs of cancer. I did not Im immediately go to the doctor. I wanted some time to sit with it and to process it before I went. I was frightened, of course. I had a daughter I was very concerned about. So maybe a month after I discovered that change in my breast, I did go to my doctor. <clears throat> and I learned of the diagnosis. And when you heard that, in fact, you did have the breast cancer and you heard those words. What were you feeling? Well, again, I wasn't surprised, so it didn't have the impact that it might have had. But I wanted to, I was confident that I would be okay. Mm -hmm. I'm a very faithful woman and very anxious to get the best of care. So step by step, I went through that process. And what, what was the course of treatment that you had? I had a mastectomy. I had my left breast removed without reconstruction. It was an option for me to have a new breast constructed, but I decided just to have the mastectomy and to wear for a short time, a prosthesis. And as you were going through that treatment, what, talk to us about what are the symptoms. You know, we hear all so often loss of hair. Um, 
were you sick at all? I did not undergo chemotherapy, which, mm. which might have resulted in my losing <clears throat> my hair. I was put on a five-year course of a drug called tamoxifen, which aims to prevent the cancer from entering vulnerable cells. So I've been on that for five years. My course ends in May, at which point I probably will begin a second drug to continue my treatment. You've been cancer-free for five years. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm, I'm very pleased. And cancer-free, of course, we hope, but that's a term that's a little inaccurate because we never really know if we're cancer-free. Mm. We know that we're managing it as best we can. Thank you for correcting me. How are you feeling? I feel wonderful. You look wonderful. Thank you. Uh, this whole time we're sitting here talking about how wonderful these ladies are saying, well, look at her, look at her, you look wonderful. Oh, there's a reason for that. And it happens to be Facing Cancer Together. Which was my next question. <laughs> how has Facing Cancer Together helped you? You know, if I hadn't happened upon Facing Cancer Together, I would have been okay. I'm sure I would have muddled along somehow through my diagnosis and treatment, but because of facing cancer together and the compassion and the care that I have been able to access, I'm moving through the experience quite gracefully with my head up and very hopeful and confident.